For the Soviets, the tide is finally beginning to turn and the shoe is on the other foot. In this, one of the best games of No Retreat the Russian Front that I've ever played, we continue the saga here today on Legendary Tactics. It's a new year and things are beginning to look up for my side. My opponent has conceded that his position is looking a bit shaky now. And we move into 1943. Uh, this is a snow turn and uh, we're taking a look. The Soviets get tank advance, also a couple of uh, shock markers and we're one turn away from high tide. And I hit my opponent with Hitler orders attack, which is played during the Axis card phase. The Axis player must initiate at least three voluntary attacks during the combat phase or lose two victory points. And I figured might as well force the issue and uh, if nothing else, uh, I will get two victory points out of it. So my opponent drew up uh, some cards and drew anti-Bolshevik crusade, which must be played immediately upon drawing it, um, which reshuffles the deck and discard pile and um, draws a new card if the Joker card is in use and the, and the Hitler is face up, which I don't think we're playing with. A quick glance at supply shows uh, that there's no issues uh, for either side. The third Romanian makes a reappearance and uh, goes to Leningrad to start. First, the Luftwaffe unit, uh, which has been struggling to get to the front, moves to the rail movement box. Probably a good move there. And then in the south, we're going to see some reorganization of things. The 6th Army is going to move uh, up to block Stalingrad, the 8th Italian, and then the 11th Army is going to pull back a little bit. Then the 17th Army is going to pull back from the 3rd Baltic and set up a defensive line near Kharkov. In the center, we have the 4th Army pulling back and circling around to replace uh, the 17th Army spot in the line. And then we have some action in the north as the 3rd Romanian moves into the fray. And then we'll get a bird's eye view of the front and my opponent will place three attacks to avoid the two victory point loss. So the counter blows we're going to play are in the north. We're going to play, uh, first of all, a counter blow on North Caucasus um, to distract the, uh, the 18th Army. And uh, we'll also play it on the, uh, on the third Belarusian um, to really make the 18th Army's uh, uh, life a bit more difficult. We're actually hoping for a destroyed unit here, um, which uh, is a, a definite possibility with a counterattack. Then we're going to play a card. It doesn't show here uh, correctly. It's the expert leader slash cavalry raid card to help out with the uh, uh, the attack, uh, the defense of Moscow. And uh, we're going to play another counter below here on uh, Bryansk to distract the 9th Army uh, and or 4th Panzer from uh, the attack on Moscow. Uh, make sure that it's not at, uh, not at full strength. So again, this card isn't shown properly here, but uh, essentially it uh, results in an exchange. Uh, so Moscow uh, takes a hit, but so does the second Panzer, which is super valuable uh, to me. It's great. So versus the uh, Dawn unit here, um, we've got the third Romanian and the 16th army. That's five on four, which is a one on one because it's uh, snow. Uh, the uh, the German player has to use the uh, the Russian uh, combat table, which is uh, not that great. <laughs> and so, um, in this case, the rule is a six, and that is defender retreat, which I'm totally fine with. That's not a not a, a bad result. I've got the room to give in the north, and so we retreat that unit back. The 16th Army advances into the gap that was left behind. And then my opponent changed his mind and uh, held back. Probably a, a wise move with so many units around ready to encircle. Next up is the 18th Army, which is uh, 3 on uh, 11, which is 1 on 4, which is an automatic counterattack. Then the attack down south uh, on Bryansk is an 8 on 3, uh, which is a 2 on 1 uh, situation. The roll is a one, uh, which is no effect. And with that, my opponent removes the counter blow marker. 
And then finally in the south, the attack on the Stalingrad unit, we've got uh, 16 on 4 is the uh, the odds, unfortunately. There is a 4 on 1. The uh, result is a 3, which is a defender retreat. Again, not a result I'm worried about. My line will be nice and strong uh, and will provide cover for that retreat. My opponent deletes the marker and I retreat back behind the Crimean and Leningrad line. My opponent then decides to advance the 6th Army into the gap left by the Stalingrad unit. Looking at the line near Moscow again, it's not looking terrifically strong, but I'm happy the 2nd Panzer is hurt, uh, it leaves it open to exchanges. And uh, now my counterattack on the 18th Army. Um, we have 11 on 3, which is 3 on 1. And my roll is unfortunately a 1. And that means a counter blow. So I'm going to leave the counter blow on my third uh, Belarusian uh, unit here. And uh, that will hopefully cause some consternation uh, on the line uh, for my opponent. Now the sharp eyed viewers out there may have noticed that the counter blow should actually have gone on the German uh, unit in this case. Um, either way, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, it's going to be tough for uh, uh, for the 18th Army to hang on to uh, to that city. All that's left now is for my opponent's Luftwaffe unit to detrain and is going to detrain in Kalinin uh, to keep things interesting. Again, I'm not sure. The, this game was played back in 2012, so the rules have evolved since then. I'm not sure if that move would still be possible, but um, that was the way the rules were at that time. And my opponent shifts the counter blow marker just to be on top. And so it's my turn now. I drop my cards, uh, check supply. Everyone's uh, in good shape that way. Here's a good look at the front. And uh, the organization phase, I'm going to spend a card to uh, flip Moscow back into uh, fortress mode. And the unit I decide to improve is the uh, North Caucasus. Um, which is now the second Belarusian, uh, which is uh, which is much much more powerful. Things are looking a little bit shaky in the north, especially if you look here. Uh, if you just to, as a reminder, the damaged Eighth Army and the Luftwaffe unit being the only units uh, holding the north. Second Panzer is there, but uh, very weakened, and so uh, things are looking in mu much much better shape uh, in this uh, in this circumstance. Now we have some movement. We have Caucasus uh, approaching that 16th Army stack as well as the Dawn uh, Army to reinforce. And to keep things flexible, I'm going to move the uh, Verones uh, unit to the rail movement box uh, for later deployment. And while we're at it in the south, we're gonna make some uh, movements here. We're gonna pull the Crimean unit out, the Stalingrad unit in, and now for combat, we do have that uh, counter blow um, that has been uh, placed on uh, this stack here, the Luftwaffe and 18th Army in the north there. And we're going to place a couple of attacks to cause some chaos here in the south. Um, first of all, somewhat obvious attack, but we're going to go after the second army, which is not quite surrounded, but uh, certainly is in an untenable position. And we're also going to put a bit of pressure on the first panzer as well. Um, we'll have to see if this is uh, a wise move, but um, I think it uh, it certainly could be, and um, we'll have to, uh, at this point, I think as the Russians, we need to be bold. Okay, and at this uh, point in the replay, I'm going to have to beg your forgiveness. There are some gaps in the Vassal record uh, here. I, I don't know where they went. I can't imagine I deleted them, um, but there are a few missing Vassal files, uh, for the remainder of this turn and next turn. After that, the rest of the, the story plays out uh, completely. I have all the files, but uh, but there was just a bit of a uh, some you know a gap here. So, but to fill in the blanks, uh, the my opponent placed a uh, counter blow on this uh, stack here. They also played a hold at all costs card that all DR uh, results are treated as an exchange. And as was kind of expected, um, there was a counter blow placed on the 6th Army here, um, which is to uh, attempt to disrupt the attack on this panzer unit. 
So we'll start with the combat in the south this time with the, first of all, with the attack on Stellino in this uh, panzer unit. Now we've got 12 on 7, um, which is a 3 on 2. Um, and we're going to use a shock marker to cancel out the uh, city uh, uh, shift. So my roll here is a 4, which is an exchange. Very happy with that result. And uh, I've got no problem... Uh, uh, making that work in my in terms of my uh, you know the arrangement of my forces here um, the first panzer goes down to a five six that's going to be tough to uh, to replace my Stalingrad unit unfortunately uh, goes to the destroyed units uh, box and uh, but overall I'm I'm pleased with that result that really weakens uh, the south uh, even more so and now Leningrad versus the sixth. It's a three on four, um, which is a one on two. Uh, not great odds, but uh, we'll roll and, and we get a two, um, which is a counterattack. Um, not something I'm totally afraid of. Uh, it's maybe something that my opponent will even wave. And now for the attack on the center uh, against the, uh, the second army, we have 13 on four, which is a three on one. So nice to finally be attacking uh, as a Soviet player with those odds. And my rule is a four, which is a defender retreat. And because the, the card uh, that was played is an interesting uh, card because uh, to me, as the Germans, you don't want exchanges in general. Um, but I guess uh, the order came in, no retreat, so <laughs> they're going to do an exchange. So because of the DR result, uh, we both take a step loss. Uh, the second army is uh, put in the destroyed units. Uh, box and I will uh, remove unit south that still allows me to keep my line together um, and uh, we can also uh, reinforce if necessary with the uh, unit in the rail movement box. So I decide to uh, use my cadre uh, in this instance um, not necessarily effective from an actual uh, defensive standpoint um, although it does help a little bit um, I think it's more about the visual of seeing that unbroken Soviet line. Um, I think that is uh, the psychological aspect to the game that I was hoping to take advantage of. And now in the north, we have the attack on uh, these units here on, on Kalinin. And I've got two improved uh, Belarusian uh, units. And I'm going to use my shock marker for this. So uh, we actually have, uh, including Don, uh, we actually have uh, 18 on 5. I realize now that we may have made a mistake in my favor as Kalinin does not provide any defensive shifts. So the odds should have been 4 on 1. However, I rolled 3 on 1. Now my roll is 5, which is a defender retreat. And so that turns it into an exchange, which uh, could be a fairly expensive uh, thing for me here. I'm going to have to lose my... Uh, my dawn unit because the Belarusians are just too uh, too precious. We'll delete the uh, the shock unit here and then um, I will remove my dawn unit to the destroyed box and uh, I, likely my opponent is just going to absorb this uh, hit with the Luftwaffe unit. And now it's time for the Caucasus uh, counter blow there. It's a three on five uh, which is a bit better odds than I expected actually. Um, but uh, my so the odds are going to be one on two. I roll and I get a one, and that means it's going to be a counterattack. Now I'll bet my opponent is going to waive that counterattack this time, uh, given the odds uh, in play. Now one aspect of that hold at all costs card that was of benefit is uh, there's no retreats from a city like Kalinin, which obviously uh, saves a victory point. And considering we're moving towards high tide. Uh, might actually uh, have been a good move, even if it's a somewhat expensive one. Now, again, there were some gaps in the narrative here. Um, the attack up north, uh, uh, the, the uh, counterattack uh, was taken, but um, resulted in a counterattack uh, result. Uh, but I declined to take it, obviously. And it seems that in the south, the result also was a, a counterattack. Uh, which I'm declining with my Leningrad unit. Now, please note the use of the uh, the cadre as well um, in that uh, spot where I'd eliminated uh, that unit. 
So as the last part of my move, I decide to detrain Verones uh, in uh, in that spot just across the Donuts uh, uh, River, and that's going to shore up the line there. Now I don't have defense in depth so much now. Um, however, it is going to be really tough for the German to break through anywhere. There's lots of opportunity for uh, encirclement and all sorts of nasty stuff um, that I uh, now finally have the opportunity to do. Here's an overhead view of where everything ended up at the end of turn 11. Okay, and try not to laugh too hard as I um, try to figure out uh, the high tide uh, rules here. Um, this was something that uh, I wasn't exactly sure how to do. Um, so um, I was sort of moving the counters around trying to make it, uh, make it work. And uh, so anyway, I think that's where things ended up, the German high tide at 24 victory points. And we advance the turn to uh, turn 12, and I juggle some of the, the markers around here in my attempt to uh, get everything organized. But the important part is this is high tide, and the initiative has finally changed. And my gosh, how things change from one log file to the next. So again, this was the, the one turn of the game where I only had a handful of log files. So I kind of have to reconstruct what uh, what's happened here, which I'll attempt to do now. Luckily, the movement uh, markers are still there. So in the north, we have a bit of a full-scale retreat here away from uh, Kalinin. Um, the 18th Army has pulled back to this uh, this hill here. Um, the idea being that now that high tide has been reached, it's time to shift to the defensive for the, the uh, German forces. And so they uh, strand the third Romanian there uh, to uh, basically act as a rear guard. And uh, they uh, the 16th and 18th Armies retreat back to uh, better terrain. In the center, we have a little bit of a similar story. Uh, we have some units kind of shifting around and uh, retreating, looking like they're setting up a defense in depth. The cadre retreats uh, as well, as you notice. And then finally in the south, the 6th Army uh, actually advances to reinforce the 1st Panzer. Uh, but uh, in general, it's just uh, kind of giving uh, uh, a bit of uh, room for me um, and I may actually get a good chance to advance, which is pretty awesome. There is one attack on uh, the city of Rostov, though, so we do need to uh, see what happens there. Now, after the, the German players completed their moves and attacks, I do uh, decide to place one counter blow um, to see if I can get the third Romanian out of there uh, on the German turn, which would be nice. Now again, missing log files, uh, but I think we can see what happened here. The attack on uh, Rostov was successful. Uh, my fifth guards head to retreat, and the sixth army advanced into Rostov uh, to uh, take take control, at least for the victory point. And now the Kalinin counter blow by the third Romanian. Now it seems that uh, my opponent's roll resulted in a counter attack, so of course I'm going to take that it's the three to one uh, odds and i roll a three which interestingly is an exchange so the romanian unit uh leaves to uh, uh to be uh returned to the game in four turns my third belarusian goes to the destroyed units box so here's a quick glance at the state of things uh at the end of uh uh, the German turn 11, and again, sorry about all the gaps here. Now, there is an SS Panzer unit that has appeared in uh, Kharkov as well. I believe that uh, came in as a reinforcement and uh, went to the rail box and then detrained there. Now, I end up having to play the Great Patriotic War because that turned up, so that reshuffles the deck and discard pile. Now, I end up playing a card here, but I'm not actually sure uh, what it is it says Stavka um, on here, but the end result basically seems to be that there's no mud in May and June um, because uh, um, I think it drew a card uh, uh, Fedor von Bach General Mud, um, but it's tough to tell um, from this uh, module which always misremembers the cards that were played. 
So now it's time to utilize my cadre. And that'll be back in one turn. And I'm going to bring back a unit here because uh, that SS Panzer looks kind of threatening. And so I'm going to bring back the third Belarusian to uh, reinforce the south, uh, south part of the line. And now I kind of play a sequence of cards here. Now it says it's new conscripts and Stavka, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but I'm not exactly sure what the effect of that card, those cards were. Uh, again, Vassal misremembers. Again, with the view that we want to defend against that newly arrived SS Panzer, we're going to uh, reinforce uh, Verones and uh, change it to the first Ukraine. Uh, now we're really beginning to look pretty strong uh, down in the south, which is perfect. Um, I want as much strength down there to counter um, the SS Panzer and the other uh, relatively strong units down there. And my reinforcement, uh, Kursk, ends up in uh, Saratov. And now it's time to spend some cards to bring some of these destroyed units back. So first of all, uh, the Dawn unit will return to Stalingrad and uh, begins uh, disorganized. And interestingly, we have the Stalingrad unit going to Gorky, where uh, that unit returns disorganized. And then after that, we have unit south going to Yaroslavl, where, once again, begins disorganized. Now again, taking a look at supply, everything, uh, everything looks good. So we'll begin top to bottom here. Um, Caucus will advance to... Uh, uh, the zone of control of 16th army of course the second belarusian is going to retake kalinin and then uh, move forward to threaten uh, the 18th army then we have the newly arrived unit south which will move forward to reinforce kalinin i hope that was legal to cross that lake and now in the moscow area we finally retake tula with southwest and we are pretty much matching the uh, the german forces uh, point for point on that in that part of the uh, the front. We're also going to move the uh, unit Stalingrad from Gorky straight to the rail movement box. Then as we move further down we're going to move the third Belarusian up to uh, once again put the pressure on. The reserve unit is uh, going to reinforce that move and then Kursk is going to shore up that little gap in the front and you can still see that the Soviets are, are limited uh, even now with those low movement factors uh, units. And then finally in the far south we've got Crimean uh, retreating a bit, the first Ukraine and uh, fifth guards advancing uh, to uh, take uh, Crimean's place and uh, we're going to move the, uh, uh, the unit uh, Dawn here from uh, Stalingrad up to again uh, reinforce uh, that uh, part of the front. And now to declare combat. So first of all, um, we have this stack here with the 4th and 17th Army looking a little bit vulnerable, so we're going to attack there. And then in the south, if it wasn't signaled already, we're going to attack the 6th Army and look to retake Rostov. There were no counter blows declared, so uh, we're just going to carry out our attacks. So we have the 3rd uh, the and 3rd against the 4th and 17th. And uh, that's a 14 on 7 or 2 on 1. Now, interestingly, my roll is a 3, which is exchange. Um, and again, normally it's kind of heartbreaking to lose those stronger units, um, but the damage to uh, the Germans in this case will be far greater. I decide to remove the 3rd Baltic. The battle in the south for Rostov we have a 14 on 4 um, at uh, 3 to 1, uh, shifted to 2 to 1 for the city, and the roll is a 4, which is an exchange. So the 6th army is uh, damaged. Um, I lose a fairly strong unit again, but, uh, but again, it's time to start uh, doing some real damage to the German forces here, and I don't think they're going to be able to push in very far with what they've got. And now I just need to do the removal of the disorganized markers, and uh, I left the target on the center uh, stack here to remind uh, my opponent to take their, their step. I imagine that the best move would be to flip the 4th Army, but uh, of course I'll have to, uh, have to leave that uh, to my opponent. And then my Stalingrad unit goes to reinforce uh, Moscow. Uh, I don't know if it would have been better to 
put it in the south, actually, but I'm looking pretty strong across the board, so I'm not too worried overall. And so we advance the turn marker to lucky turn 13, and it's lucky for me because beginning this turn, I get two free Soviet upgrades, um, which is uh, going to really help me to uh, start to turn the tide. So now it's on my opponent to uh, begin to play a defensive game and to uh, hold on to as much territory for as long as possible. And uh, we'll see how they do. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in to the latest chapter in this uh, replay of uh, No Retreat, The Russian Front, in one of the best games I experienced. And I hope you're getting some enjoyment out of it, out of it as well. Uh, thank you so much for watching. This is NATO with Legendary Tactics.